Senate and House GOP leaders came to an agreement on tax reform last night. Their new version would cut the top rate for the wealthy from 39.6 percent to 37 percent and lower the corporate rate from 35 to 21 percent. Middle and low income families would get smaller cuts. Yesterday, the president said he's eager to get this bill on his desk. If Congress sends me a bill before Christmas, the IRS, this is just out, this is breaking news, has just confirmed that Americans will see lower taxes and bigger paychecks beginning in February, just two short months from now. The plan should be able to squeeze through the House, but with Tennessee's Bob Corker already saying he's against it, Senate Republicans can afford just one more defector before Vice President Mike Pence needs to step in and cast a deciding vote. And that's a problem, because Senators Marco Rubio and Mike Lee are now reportedly on the fence. So will this thing be a done deal in a week's time? Joining me now is Washington Examiner commentary editor Tim Carney. Tim, welcome to the show. Always a pleasure. I'm not in favor of this thing. I don't think it stimulates the economy. I don't think it's fair at all. It actually raises my taxes because of the uh, amount of real estate tax I have to pay that I can't deduct. Put aside my views. Is it going to pass? I think it will because I think that what Rubio and Lee are asking for here is totally within the bounds of something that Republican leaderships can Republican leadership can and ought to agree to, which is that the child tax credit ought to be expanded to be more refundable against your payroll taxes. That is, when people's, uh, you know, low income, maybe your your taxes, your income tax is only a thousand dollars. You're still probably right. paying five, six thousand dollars in your payroll taxes, and that you should be able to get the child tax credit against that. That's what Rubio and Lee are asking for. I think that it, even if that top rate can't come down quite as far, I think. That's something any Republican leadership ought to agree to, and I think they will rather than run the risk of losing the vote. All right, Tim, the, the income tax is 100 years old. For all 100 years, there's been no double taxation. You are not taxed on state and local taxes, whether it was real estate or state income tax. Why are they changing that now? People bought houses and planned their lives expecting to have those deductions. All of a sudden, the rug is pulled out from under them. Well, I think those are two separate exemptions. On the, on the first part, that's why at the examiner we've said the state and local tax deduction. We think it should, you shouldn't get the deduction anymore, but it should be phased out for exactly the reason you're talking about. It's same with the mortgage deduction. It gets priced into our lives. Right? We build our lives making decisions around this. It should be a long, steady sort of ramp out of that. But as far as the double taxation goes, we know that state, uh, at the examiner, we've looked at uh, when they've hiked state income taxes repeatedly, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, they say, well, we're going to hike your taxes, but don't worry about it because you can deduct it. It's basically like other states are paying a quarter of it. So what they're doing is they're externalizing their costs. It's like businesses that go out and get corporate welfare. We don't want states to have such an incentive to offload the costs of their bloated government, like your state in New York or my state in Maryland are offloading the right, costs right. of their bloated government. Right. We just have a few seconds next few seconds left, and I know you're an economist, not on the political side. What happens if this fails? What happens if Donald Trump cannot say, I got your tax cuts, goodbye, I'm going home for Christmas? I think no matter what happens, Republicans are going to lose the House, and if they can't deliver a tax cut, I think they lose the Senate, too. And Donald Trump, I can't imagine what he would run on for re-election if he doesn't repeal Obamacare and can't cut taxes because he couldn't drain the swamp and a bunch of special interests killed his tax cut. I think the Republican Party is even more done than it already is. Tim, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.